You're listening to the Clean Comedy Podcast with James Creviston and Luke LaCoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Clean Comedy Podcast. It's James, and I'm here with my co-host, Danny. Hey. Danny, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Getting uh, in the Halloweeny spirit. I've got my uh, my Boba Fett hoodie that zips. Wait for it, all the way up. Zip all the way up. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Okay, I have a question about that because I don't know anything sure. about those. Can you see through that? Oh yeah. Give me oh, give can't... me a number or something. Does a treat for the YouTube watchers. Number two. Oh wow, that's awesome. Oh, I'm so right. Ex- excited right now. I can't even. Yeah, yeah. It. So again, this is a uh, if that's not a screaming advertisement to watch on YouTube, then I don't know what is. Sorry, yeah. Spotify listeners. Yeah. We have a lot of listeners all over the all over the world, and, and we're growing every every uh, week, and numbers are going up. And I appreciate every single person who is listening to this. So if you're not, if you're listening to this, just listening, please go over to YouTube. Please subscribe, even if you don't want to watch the episode. Please just subscribe. We use all the subscribers we need. We we're trying to get to a thousand. We're at five ten last time I checked. Five ten, five eleven, something like that. So that's same as my height. But I'd like to get to a thousand, so we'd be as tall as Shaq. So let's do that. Uh, I don't know how tall Shaq. Curious what we look like. <laughs> yeah. <Aren't you? laughs> um, so I want to talk comedy because that's what this show is about. But there is a lot of things that happened recently in the comedy community. If uh, most of you don't know, one of the great uh, pioneers of comedy, Mort Saul died. Now, he was not a clean comedian. He did, if you know Lenny Bruce or George Carlin, he was a groundbreaker like that. He spoke up for freedom of speech. Now, as a clean comedian, um, we don't normally go into blue comedy, and we don't usually use some words that maybe would get us in trouble. But however, however, there are topics that we talk about that do make people uncomfortable, right? Especially if you're a Christian comedian or a uh, conservative type comedian, you may not side on one side of the uh, of the political spectrum or the other. You may be on one side that upsets people, and they won't don't want you to give do those jokes, right? I've heard. You know, some people tell, say, Christian comedians are the worst. The uh, queen comedians are stupid. What, like, whatever it is, I've heard, I've seen and heard all those things, and I've even had people say, queen comedians are not real comedians because you guys don't talk about real stuff. I'm like, we're not. We're talking about our family, our kids, our life, all the same stuff. You are. I'm just not throwing in 18 f bombs, and I'm not talking about my body parts. So you know, but uh, <laughs> body parts, though, James, you should talk about them more. I, I should. I don't talk about my, uh, my, my, yeah, whatever. My reproductive organs. How about that? That's probably the, I guess that's the better, the better that's way to say clean it. comedy podcast folks. Yeah, yeah. So in that vein, I am, I am, a, I am a student of comedy. I will listen and watch any comedy. I don't care. I want, I, I learned something from, even from bad comedy, right? There's tons of bad comedy. If you go to like YouTube or Reddit uh, or anywhere on the internet and you look up like people's first, sets are usually terrible i know my first set was terrible like if you go watch those but there's something in there there's always something to glean from it right like and even and i want to say this to everybody who goes on reddit or youtube and and when you post your first of like and i want to say some of the people that that just rip those people apart remember you were new once too yes i get that it's annoying that 80 brand new comedians are putting their first open mic on reddit or youtube or whatever free to watch but give them a little support make it Make it a, I think it's called a, um, oh, great. Now I just went blank. It is a, it's the sandwich method of giving, uh, feed, oh, start, the, was it like the constructive yeah, feedback I mean, we, sandwich? Yeah, a crap sandwich, basically. You know, it's, yeah. it's so you, nice so, stuff. The yeah. crap goes in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So you say something nice, then you say something constructive at least constructive it shouldn't be destructive you should constructive and then something else nice because you might be like hey you have great stage presence uh you have no punchlines, but maybe if you rework this thing a little bit you could have a punchline here 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 and here also i liked your shirt boom there you go that's all you have to do don't be like why are you posting this you suck no one wants to listen to you your jokes are retarded like whatever stuff people write this stuff on on reddit and youtube all the time and i'm like what are you doing like, yeah. and then they want, then they're like, the comedy community sucks. And it's like, yeah, because of people like you, like you're being toxic. Don't be toxic. Yeah, the internet, uh, the internet is famously a place for constructive criticism <laughs> and civil discord. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we always talk about though, comedy is subjective, right? So even, you know, that person posting, like you'll never know unless you, 
you post it, you know, I mean, Michael Jordan or, you know, or, or some people, I think even credit it to Wayne Gretzky, right? But they say you take a hundred, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Uh, and who it's did, like, who, who did actually say it? I thought it was Gretzky. Jordan. You thought Gretzky? I thought Jordan. I mean, I'll, I'll Google it. Um, well, Gretzky but, played yeah. before Jordan did though, right? He played before Jordan started playing? Uh, they were both late eighties, I thought, at least from a professional standpoint. Right. right? Well, but um, yeah. Right. But no, I mean, it's, it's objective, right? So even if, you know, for example, I post something and a bunch of people don't like it. It's like, well, at the same time, there may be other people that actually really do like it. And, you know, even, even when I become quote unquote professional, right. It's like, yeah, well, there's still going to be a lot of people that think you're terrible. And there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, uh, think you're great. I don't know. It's, it's always going to be a mixed bag, but, um, yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the truth because like, there's like Bill Burr hate threads. There's Joe Rogan hate threads. There's Dave Chappelle hate threads. There's Louis C.K. I mean, it doesn't matter what comedian it is. Somebody hates them. I mean, I just read a thing the other day and I want to interview him, by the way, Bobcat Goldway, who, mm. if you remember like, yeah. like that guy from police Academy, which I grew up watching and loving, by the way, I thought like was the, one of the funniest dudes ever uh, has beef with Jerry Seinfeld. So it's like, okay, like yeah. that's insane to me. Like those two guys should be, I would think would be friends, but they're not. And Bobcat, if you're listening to this or anyone knows him, I would love to have him. He doesn't have to do the voice. I know that it's a voice. I did not know that when I was a kid. I assumed that he always talked like that. And uh, I would do that at my house. I obviously didn't do a great impression, so I do apologize, yeah. Bobcat. Uh, if I went back and watched Police Academy for about 20 minutes, I'm sure I'd come back with a much better one. Um, I should do that. I should like, pause this at some point, go watch something, and then come back and do it. Anyways, so uh, everybody had – I mean, I get it. Not everyone is everyone's cup of tea. The blue collar comedy tour is not going to sell out in Los Angeles. It's not. <laughs> right? Yeah. You might be a redneck, not going to hit in LA. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you would ignore the blue collar comedy tour in LA, you might not be a redneck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now if someone came out with you might be a hipster, that would probably kill in LA, right? That might work. You know? Maybe. Yeah. So, you know, just stuff like that. So, that's that's one thing that, that that noticed the week. The second thing that I thought was awesome, as we're on the topic of freedom of speech, is there was a story that I read that I'd kind of been watching a little bit about a comedian in Canada who had made fun of a special needs kid and uh. then got sued by the family. Oh, and be, and basically got fined all this money because they said it was hate speech. And he's now this Canada, so it's not American, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. And uh, he went through the whole process and then it went to their Supreme Court. And the Supreme huh. Court ruled in the favor of the comedian saying that it's free speech, that, you know, it was a joke. It was in context of this, like terrible well, joke, maybe. Terrible joke. Yeah. I mean, definitely, no, definitely a terrible like joke. It. I, I, yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen it and I've seen it like transcribed. It was a terrible joke, but it was also like, I think it was like 10 years ago where it was like a different kind of thing where like you could get away with saying some of the words that he said. Um, like even now, even though we say freedom of speech, there are certain words that like, me as a white comedian can't go on stage and say the n-word like 50 times i can't even say it once let's be honest but i mean yeah i felt i felt icky when you were you know quoting internet trolls and saying the r-word i was like yeah i know i felt bad i'm I, yeah. also i'm sorry guys i, um, I know you're playing a, a, a playing the role of yeah. internet jerk but is it, yeah it's like they're just words where and it's crazy by the way because you said 10 years ago and i'm like yo that's still 2011 though you know like did did we really not know better in 2011 like that still feels recent ish but yeah, I, still, ten years ago. I, I knew people in 2009 still using uh the term gay for, mm, for like stuff for, that things yeah. that they didn't like or whatever like that terminology so that i mean yeah. it literally it takes time for a word to kind of go out of vogue some words go quick right because we have the internet now but 2009 yeah. the internet still wasn't as strong as it is now it wasn't have as much power sure. um so that word was still used quite a bit to describe things that people didn't like or hated or annoyed them or whatever. I don't know the yeah. how to use that word. Actually, I have no oh, idea yeah. how that slang was used anymore because I don't remember. And I, but yeah. anyways, so that was one thing. And I thought it was interesting because there were, there were people on both sides of the fence that I watched talk about like, oh, that's right. They should have stuck up for freedom of speech. And the other people were like, yes, but 
now he's learned and the guy did learn a lesson he did say like he would never do that joke again he did apologize for it and all that stuff but it was like one of those things where like yeah how long is it gonna last like how if you tell a joke that t- today is fine by today's standards yeah at what point does it not become okay yeah and then do you judge it by the current standards or by the standards of the time when it was presented i i definitely understand that argument and do have I don't know if sympathy is the right word. I mean, empathy. but I, I, I get it. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's tough, especially because sometimes those things change so fast, to your point, with the internet and being yeah. what it is. And, you know, there are a lot of terms that I try to, like, take out of my vocabulary yeah. that, you know, like, like saying, like, oh, that's crazy. Like, you know, even now I'm like, yeah, you know, I, because there are people where that word means yeah. something to them, makes them feel a certain kind of way. And you know, what, what does it affect me? You know what I mean? Like to not say that word. Oh, I, I didn't realize it affected you. Great. I'll stop saying it. That doesn't like, I'm not going to die on the hill because I want to say something is crazy. Like, no, it, it, it hurts people. And that's like a relatively new thing for me. Great. I'll, I'll stop saying it. I'll say, Whoa, that's wild. Oh, that's silly. Uh, like, you know, whatever it is, but I love saying um, wild. Wild's my favorite version of that. Yeah. 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 And, and again, what's wrong with that? Great. I, it, it's a short switch and, and it's done. And I feel like there's some people that, you know, uh, you know, people like Seinfeld, right? Given he's obviously earned the right to maybe kind of want to plant his flag a little bit, but at the same time, like there's some people that are very vocal about like, no, like, oh, cancel culture has gone too far. And it's like, who, wh- what do you care? You know, like, yeah. what if, like, oh, I can't say this word. So think of another word. Like our, our job is to think of things outside the box that are funny and, you know, whatever. It's like, you use a different word. Like I doubt it's going to change the meaning of your joke. If you can't say, you know, one word versus it's synonym, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. The whole thing is just, what do you care? You know, just say a different word. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is like saying the word uh, is, and I get both sides of the argument of saying, you know, Hey, we should be able to say whatever we want, but at the same time, it's like, Hey, also you have to realize you're talking to other human beings that have feelings and thoughts and ideas. And when you present those things, they can have issues with them, right? So you're like, the word crazy. I didn't know that was actually, it's a trigger for some people. I didn't realize that that was a real thing. But okay, cool. Like if someone said to me, hey, that word bothers me. I'm like, okay, cool. I apologize. I will not use that word. You know, I, I have friends that are, that are trans that um, I now find myself, someone will be like, we'll call them the wrong uh, pronoun. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's, you know, and I'll, correct people and they're like it's okay like it's like you don't need to you don't need to do that for me but i'm like no because you already said it you know like i'm i'm ready to like go to war for over it's weird i don't know i think most people and obviously i I can't speak for for the trans community for or for you know the mentally ill community or whatever it is like i can't speak for them obviously but i feel like a lot of times it's just like hey a little effort a little recognition like that's all like it's just it's a it's a want to feel seen in a way um a, a friend of mine um you know, is, is part of, you know, that community, uh, they identify their, their pronouns are they, them, uh, they, them, they you know, um, and at first it was sort of a, a shift, right? Because I knew them before, you know, those pronouns uh, as, as a previous pronoun. And it's one of those things where would they be upset with me if I slipped and used a different pronoun? Probably not because they know my intent and my care and they just see like, Hey, you're trying, like, you know, if, if, nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 or even seven out of 10 times you're using my correct pronouns. I do appreciate that. Right. And you know, I, I, I would have to think that if I use the wrong pronoun, I was like, Oh no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, okay. Now, now I kind of do look like a weird, I was like, no, it's, it's fine. You know, yeah. like I, I appreciate it. You are, you're, you're trying to meet me where I'm at, you know, and it's, again, it's, what do I care? <laughs> what do I, how do, it, it doesn't affect me. So great. Like yeah. why not help somebody feel seen or help somebody not feel triggered or what you know whatever it may be you know and that's the thing is comedy is all about words right what we, what we say is what we say to make people laugh yep. and so when we say things that hurt as opposed to entertain yep. that's that's a different thing right that's you're not being a comedian anymore now you're being i don't i don't know but you're not being a comedian that's not in the spirit of comedy is saying things that could be hurtful or misconstrued or attacking somebody or attacking a group. That's what they call like punching up or punching down, right? Those two terms are, are used exactly. often. Exactly. But uh, 
I had one more thing. What was the other last one? Oh, as I was talking about that, we we had talked previously about different comedians and how they have changed comedy, right? And even today, yeah. we're getting comedians now. I don't know if I, I don't know. I'm not how sure how familiar you are with Louis C.K. Are you pretty familiar yeah. with his work? Yeah, yeah. So he has said, as a white guy, uh, to be fair, he's actually not white. He is actually part Latino. Right. Oh, so oh, okay, right. in case people don't know that, he is part actually Latino. Uh, uh, but he, even with his red hair, or whatever, people always think he's white. But he right. has used the N word in his act, and it's now. Whether good, bad, otherwise, people allowed him to get away with it when he said it. I was very surprised that that was a thing, and yeah. I don't, I don't know. And there, there wasn't any backlash on that, as far as I know. I've looked around; I haven't seen very much backlash for that bit. It was more about the other things that he's done, obviously. But, yeah, um, which, which obviously are terrible, and and screw that guy. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think you see, you know, a lot of um, like digging up people that like would wear like blackface you know um, yes and again about that and it gets back to that conversation right well it was funny at the time and oh i was just pushing the envelope and it's like people that like i don't think had any kind of intent at the time right um you know like um jimmy kimmel right when he did the the carl malone bit and oh, he, he more blackface i remember you know being younger and at the time and like seeing that and thinking it's hilarious and at the time you don't really think anything of it right um, but I think a lot of it comes down to how do you react once you realize you have hurt people, even if it is by a 15, 20 year old, whatever bit, right. you know, and that's where I think it's like, okay, somebody like Jimmy Kimmel, you know, he has clearly in the time since then made an effort and showed a certain kind of, uh, you know, contrition towards different folks, um, obviously, especially communities that are marginalized, uh, you know, and you, so it's like, okay, go figure, he's somebody that you'd probably be willing to give a pass for, you know, versus somebody like, you know, we mentioned Louis C.K. And it's like, well, he did those terrible things. And like, I don't know, he, he wrote like a, an, an apology that take, you know, however sincere you feel it might have been. And then he just kind of disappeared for a while. And then it's like, okay, is that, is that it? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, and, and then he just started doing comedy again. It's like, oh, we're, he's just going to do comedy again. Like, I, you know, I, I have, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a weird thing, you know, and I'm not like, what do we want from him? Yeah. I, I don't know, but am I necessarily comfortable with him just being out there? And it's like, no, at the same time, you know, like I, I don't, again, it, it's not a thing where it's like, ah, uh, uh, you got to check these three, uh, these three items. Sorry for an alarm there. No, no, you're fine. Um, but yeah, it's a weird thing. I don't know. But, so then that's the other thing is how do we do we how do we separate the comedy from the comedian, right? At, at that point too, because yeah. Jimmy Kimmel, we know is not a bad person, right? He's not a bad guy. He was doing a bit. He was doing a, a sketch or whatever that doesn't make him a bad person for doing it. However, right. He was doing it for the sake of comedy. It's like in like Mel Brooks and in Blazing Saddles, I think that has the record for the most N words in it, if I remember right. Yeah. But if you know the story behind that, it was originally written by him a, with the help of Richard Pryor, Okay. Ooh, that was Richard Pryor's favorite word. Like I was say, that would explain the words. Yeah, yeah, but but because of the drug use and everything that Richard Pryor was doing at the time, he was considered a liability by the studio, and therefore mm. was not put in Blazing Saddles because he was supposed to be originally that that character. Gotcha. So that yeah. that thing's there. And then the other thing is like I grew up on Bill Cosby. I love Bill Cosby bits. I do. I love the chocolate cake bit. And when we have chocolate cake in my house, I do the chocolate cake bit. I separate myself from Bill Cosby, the person and Bill Cosby's comedy, because it's not the same thing. At least I try to, it's hard yeah. sometimes because I'm like, Oh man, I know I shouldn't like this, but I grew up on this bit and it's hilarious. And chocolate cake doesn't hurt anybody, by the way, that, that bit, if you've ever heard it, it's not like, it's not like Spanish fly where you could be like, Whoa, that's yeah. a little dicey, right? Maybe that's. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I mean, I think a, a, another big part of it is like, is the offending act part of their comedy bit where they were just trying to push comedy in a certain way and be edgy or be, you know, whatever, like, uh, Sarah Silverman talks about this a lot. She obviously yeah. had a lot of, push you know, jokes. some kind of, yeah, exactly. That's kind of her shtick, right? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel kind of, you know, like we talked about, but then it's like, there are the other things where it's like, you know, the Cosby's and the Louis C.K.'s where it's like, you weren't 
pushing comedy, you know, right. you were, you had an act, an influential act, but then you're abusing people, you know, yeah. and that's outside of the act. And I'm, I'm obviously less willing to forgive that because it's like, you can't even make an argument that it was, no. oh, in the sake, you know, oh, no. but it was comedy. It's like, well, no, that, that clearly wasn't. So for me, that's where it's, um, I can, I can a little bit easier kind of separate the, the person from the act where it's like, ah, they just took the act a little too far. Their sense of humor was a little jaded. They were in a certain, you know, of the, of the era, whatever it is. Um, so you would, know, you, would you listen to a Bill Cosby bit today or would you feel that that's not okay? Uh, I probably just wouldn't have any interest. I, I, I don't think it would be like some type of like moral stand or like, no, I would never. Um, but it's like, yeah, he sucks. And I, I feel like if somebody, like if, if it was on, I'd just be like, eh, eh, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, just, clouded, eh. it's clouded my way of listening to it because I used to love it, right? I, I own yeah. every Bill Cosby album. It was like my jam. And yeah. like, it's be like if Steve Martin came out and like people were oh. saying like he does, I would cry. Like it would break my heart. My, I can I never listen to a banjo again. Right. Yeah, I know. And I loved his stand up, and I watched all his stuff and, or Bob Newhart came out and something or, you yeah. know, and, and we, and also the other thing is I heard recently like Eddie Murphy's trying to get back in stand up. Now, if you've ever seen Delirious or um, what's the other one now? I keep forgetting. Uh, Delirious and. Uh, raw or, or is that. Uh, yeah, Raw. Eddie Murphy Rock. But he has a lot of jokes that today you could never do, right? He, so, uh, but I don't think he would come. And he's even apologized for those too, I believe. And it's, that's, interesting. that's very interesting. Now, here's the other thing. So there's Jimmy Kimmel doing blackface. Now, what about Dave Chappelle doing whiteface? Like, how is that? Like, what's the, what's the balance here? Like, in 20 years, are we going to say Dave Chappelle was wrong for doing whiteface? I mean, I can't I, I imagine have- that's the case, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it, and I could be wrong, but I guess in my, in my. By the uh, way, I love Dave Chappelle Whiteface, by the way, just so everybody knows. I don't care. Well, yeah. Chip. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's so funny. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I do think there's a thing to be said where it's, which, which community is the marginalized one? Um, you know, um, Dave Chappelle, obviously in the news now for, for, you know, going after other marginalized communities. Um, and, and there's obviously much less forgiveness, I think, for those bits than Dave Chappelle making fun of a white person. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, you know, uh, someone like Dave Chappelle, a, a Dave Chappelle, a, a prominent black comedian in that marginalized community, them making fun of, you know, like a white person, for example, I almost see that in a way as punching up. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, now, again, depending on, I guess, the nature of the joke. Um, you know, but but I think, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, like, because his bits, I don't think were, well, no, but it was whiteface. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I it's an it interesting funny. thing, right? Although, like, the best, the best Chappelle bit, like, sketch ever is Clayton Bigsby. I don't care what anyone says. Like, that is the, yeah. the ultimate one where he's totally just destroying what, like, this racist ideology of you're just blindly following something that you have no clue about. And if somebody else took over this thing your your heads would explode that was the whole joke like i'm going to show you that what you believe is ridiculous and that i could sub- subvert all of you and then make fun of it right and so that was the whole point. i love that that's why that sketch is probably the most classic Chappelle. yeah I mean, some people might say player player here this ball maybe i don't know or, or something like uh, that the the racial draft the racial was, draft was, was the next one too I was pretty say. pretty darn good but um yeah it's that was <laughs> I mean, that one, I think, uh, Clayton Bixby, that was like episode one, right? That, I think was, that like was episode one. Yeah. Um, but that's oh, so good. Yeah. Bit, bit of, bit of trivia. Do you remember not only episode one, but sketch number one, the very first sketch that aired? Do you remember which one it was? I was kind of throwaway, you know, a throwaway sketch, but it was, but it was a pretty funny one. Do you remember what it was? I only could tell you the first episode for sketch of Key and Peele. Oh, okay. Um, I could not. I don't know. I, I bet if you said something about it, I probably would remember. Oh, uh, is, this, is uh, it this? No, that's not this. That's Ski Pill, the Slavery. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, uh, girl dancing in the front seat. Well, I guess that's kind of the bit, but do you remember it? No. He, he was making fun of those old uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse commercials. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, it, it, it was just hilarious. And um, yeah, he had the um, <laughs> the white girl in the front popping and locking to um, to whatever like techno hip hop house song. Uh, but he was just sitting there like, 
like, ugh. And then, yeah, it's just the whole bit. And then he gets, you know, Black Girl there. He's listening to his rap music. She's, you know, just obviously over the top. But I don't know. It was, it was a hilarious bit. And it, like, completely said, like, I don't know. It was just fun, fun fact, fun aside. But, yeah, um, that, was, that was the first sketch was the, the Mitsubishi one. Oh, yeah. nice. And it wasn't even one of the bigger famous ones, yeah. No, no, no. I The Wayne Brady one is one of my other favorite ones that he did. Mm, Wayne Brady mm-hmm. is like, <laughs> Wayne Brady's so pimp and stuff. Of course, the Charlie Murphy ones. Yeah. Charlie Murphy's are great. Uh, and, that, and that's the thing is that opened the door to Key and Peele, which then they got to do a bunch of stuff like that. They also did Whiteface. And then, you know, you watch White Girls of the right. so, And I think those are funny. But I'm, yeah. I always wonder, like, what's the – what happened? Like, it's, it's, it's almost like a 10-year shift of what – what is okay, what's not okay. It's weird. And that's why, and not that I say like, that's why I'm a queen comedian, but it's an easy way to be a queen comedian. So you don't ever have to worry about like really towing any lines. Like you're like, cause if I make jokes about my family, that's my family. Ten years, someone's going to get mad at me about me joking about my family. Come on now. Like you can't, there's no way you can even do that. It's just yeah. like, yeah. it's, it's no. super funny. Do you know the first Key and Peele sketch? That, that I don't. It was the, was it- I, I said B word. To, to Mike. That was that was sketch that was number first one. Sketch number one, first sketch. Yeah, they came out hot, man. They came out swinging. That's one of the best. That's one of the best sketches. Oh, I ever. still to this day like quote that. Like, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, my wife and I would make fun of that all the time. Like, we think it's hilarious because it's it's not that technical phrase, but it's like people will say things to other people that they wouldn't say in front of their spouse of because yeah. you know, whatever. No, and I just love the the the, the bravado, you know. Yeah. But like, of course, it's like, let's be real, man. We know our wives run the household, yeah, you know. Yeah. But you know, like I'm in here, and you know, just yeah. It would literally be like if we're sitting here and being like, man, my wife, she, you know, whatever. And it's just like, oh, but but, but you said it though, right? I love that. And it's that's like the, in space. Are, <laughs> in space is the best one. That's the one I was like, yeah, that's. But that's for real. Like you would like, even when they were like way out in the middle of everywhere and they were in the tree together and there's like looking around and there's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so, so Great funny. Game. So of comedians that you feel have changed comedy better or worse, it could be either way. Who would be like, let's do one for, let's, let's just say who, who you think has helped comedy uh, the most that you could think of, or has it's actually changed comedy for the better in your opinion. Um, boy, that's a, that's a tough one on the spot. Um, I I will say, I think Jerry Seinfeld. And the reason I say that is because he proved to everybody that you could take a standup set and you could turn it into something else, something beyond standup, right? And his standup, and then you got all the ripoffs, right? We, I think we talked about this before. You got all the ripoff people was like, what's the deal with airplane food? And it became happy, but, but he showed that comedy is about taking taking notice of something and picking it apart and breaking it down and making fun of it at all its ways, right? You know, he would have probably been the first one to come up with like, why do they call a driveway? Why you you know whatever the thing is like? Why do you park in a driveway and drive in a parkway? What's the deal yeah. with that? You know, like that kind of thing. Like, I'm totally. a terrible Seinfeld, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you, you got to get the nasal, and you got to get the little like twinge, the little like, ah! <laughs> like the, the, fake, <laughs> the fake outrage, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, cause obviously, this being Clean Comedy Podcast, you know what I mean? Like, um, I think somebody like a Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah. Um, not necessarily my cup of tea. Like I, he, he's not my style comedian, but I think he was so like different from other acts. Like he doing the whole redneck bit, you know? Um, and, and, it, and it was, it just very different. And I think it really opened the door for people that are like, Oh, I, I, I can be in my lane and still be very funny. Like I don't have to try to be, you know, some type of, of, of comic or, or whatever it is. And you know, I, I've talked a lot about Jim Gaffigan and just like how I, I think he's so fantastic. And I, I love that, like, you know, him and his wife, like write the jokes together, you know, like it's um, it, it, so it's always like sort of about his family, but never like putting them down. Like it's always kind of like, a, yeah, it's signed off. The family approves of these yeah. jokes, but again, it's clean comedy, right? It's, it's just like, you, you don't have to be, uh, you know, a vulgar comic or you don't have to be like, I don't know. He, he just, he's a doughy, you know, a self-proclaimed doughy, pale, 
plain, you know, whatever. He's like, yeah, but I'm just really funny. And like, I don't know, I, I, I really appreciate what, what, you know, the two of them, I think, do as well. Um, right. Just kind of being so unique and so specific, but still really attracting a huge number of people, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. cool we don't have a uh, catchphrase comedians very much anymore. Like Roddy Dangerfield used to do that too. Like I can't mm-hmm. get no respect, you know, like pull his collar yeah. and do all this stuff. Yeah. And, and then, you know, Jeff Foxworthy and then uh, Bill Ingvall had the, here's your sign. And yep. then uh, you have uh, Larry, the cable guy, like get her done. Like those were things that were happening for a while where people were having catchphrase comedians yeah. and then they kind of died off. Like, yeah. which is very interesting to me. I always assume that, I, when I, maybe it was a younger thing. I always thought like, oh, if I could just get a cool, funny catchphrase, like that's it. Like you could ride the way for forever, you know? I mean, you mentioned Larry the Cable Guy. I mean, that was his, I mean, I'm, I'm sure down. you know this, right? But like, that's not his real voice and that nope. is not his shtick, you know? Like he was just a, a guy that was trying to be a regular old stand-up and it didn't work. And then all of a sudden, instead of talking like this, he started talking like this and he started saying his shirty words. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, again, it's- Character. It, it, exactly, it's, it's a character, it's a persona. Um, but to your point, it's a catchphrase. And man, he rode the hell out of that wave. I, you got you almost got to give him credit, you know? Like, yeah, he still he, does uh, stuff. He still does like commercials done. and- like he made a movies off of that character. Like that's, his, it's like Ernest P world, you know, like you used to, that guy was everywhere for a while. Like, yeah. Super yeah. funny. And, or Pee Wee Herman, which, man, that yes. was, that ruined my childhood. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Pee Wee. Uh, but yeah, you know, Sorry, James. <laughs> I used to be able to do that all the time. I would run around my house like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's, that was a thing. Like, and we also don't see a lot of character comedians anymore. And I, I kind of would like to see a resurgence of that. I don't know if that's something that would actually work nowadays, but I yeah. would love to see, see that. I've always wanted to create a character, just do my own standup and then yeah. also do a set as a character comedian, like and not Andy Kaufman esque, but in that realm of like a character that subverts people's ideas. I think what's hard about that now is there's such a demand for authenticity now. Yeah. Where if you're doing a character, it, you know, it may not even be like problematic per se, but it's just kind of like, it, it wouldn't stick as much. Yeah. Like I, I've actually thought about this. Uh, uh, um, I, I thought about, uh, you know, I, I talked about my mom in previous podcasts and how I just thought she was just the funniest person to like mimic. Um, and I definitely thought of like doing more bits and more, things like as her in that like not just doing her voice but like reacting to something as her um you know so I've definitely thought of it as well you know but yeah I just think the way things are going today it's just like I don't know people are like I want to know about you like I don't know what's your story comedian um authenticity is is the biggest capital right now but also I mean things are cyclical like things like do come back like we had like George Carlin started off as the hippy dippy weather man right like that's yeah. what he started off as and then he right. went to whatever and then you know uh as much as we we love Roddy Dangerfield he wasn't good when he started like he dropped out sold siding came back started becoming Roddy Dangerfield and then blew up you know yeah. like I said you know Larry the Cable Guy or whatever and yeah. I think there's that I think maybe five to 10 years from now, we'll see another one of those kind of people come back. I would love, I would love to see that. I want to see something like that because it's unique now because of authenticity. It is unique to have somebody that's not authentic come and do something, which might be a way of people to go, Oh, this is interesting. This is new. This is whatever. You know, I don't know. I we'll we'll see. I I'm going to predict in the next five to ten years we will have a mainstream comedian that is not authentic that is a character comedian that does well. I'm not talking like Piff the Magic Dragon, which I love that guy by the way, he's cool. Um, or somebody like that. I'm talking like we're getting another, uh, yeah, another Leo the Cable guy, another, uh, you know, Roddy Dangerfield, another Hippy Dippy Weatherman, something like that. And, and I know on YouTube those do exist, right? Like I get that part. I was talking about an actual stand-up comedian. Yeah. Could you argue that like mean comics, like like an Anthony Jeselnik, could you argue there, you know? You know it's a character, but he can sell it because you think that's who he really is. So it still feels authentic, even though he's lying to you. Uh, now, Jeselnik is one of my all-time favorites too, because he's like Dan- so just like Dan- mean. Uh, just like Dan- <laughs> those are two of my favorites because they're not my style. I can appreciate them so much more yeah. because they are mean, right? But Jesselnik, yeah. Jesselnik, see, part of his why he works is 
he's letting you know that he that you're in on the bit and he knows that you're in on the bit. That's why I can get away with saying the things that I'm saying because you know that it's not real and I know it's not real yeah. and everyone in this room knows it's not real. Everyone watching, listening, we all know it's not real. I'm just saying whatever I can say to you to yeah. make you feel uncomfortable enough to yeah. laugh. Yeah, that's it. He's, he's very mean, but he's also very smart and like clever. Mm -hmm. um, and again, comedy is subjective. You you enjoy Tosh. I'm not a huge Tosh fan because I think he's mean and kind of like common denominator. Like I don't want to say lazy. That's that's not fair, you know. But just like I don't know. Lowest it's just like all right, we, lowest we common denominator. It. I agree. Well, low, he does a lot of low hanging fruit jokes, but yeah, I, which is like not, uh, all right. He's, yeah, he's, a, he's like a offshoot of just like, he's he's like the. He's like the uh, generic brand of Jesselnik. Yeah, right? yeah. Maybe that's Jesselnik is just, I mean, some stuff you're like, oh my God, can you even say that on TV? But again, it's the fact that like, I mean, A, they're incredibly well-written jokes. Um, and and B, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's again, you're, you're kind of in on the bit, you know? It's like, he's, you, you know that he, he's doing it with a twinkle in his eye, you know? That's the thing, right? He's likable, even when he's saying the... <sighs> worst stuff possible you're worst like, stuff. You're like, wow i like you still like i should be friends with you like that's how you feel even though you're like oh my gosh you should not be saying this actually it's yeah. like your friend who does like when you're at least when i was growing up i had like this one friend that would always say terrible things and i'm like dude you can't say stuff like that like around anybody like that's not okay but like yeah. you would still laugh because you're like well he's my friend it's funny whatever but you're like Part of you is like, dude, don't say that. But then the other part of you is like, yeah, say it. I want to hear what you're going to say now. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. like, That's our idiot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I'm glad we talked about comedy. That's the thing is like, com if you get anything from this, remember, words have meaning. And that's the point of being a comedian is your words have to have a meaning. and But the meaning should be to make people laugh. Not to hurt anybody. Not to punch down. Not to ostracize people. Not to any of those things. Don't go on the internet. And if you're going to go and give someone feedback, give them that, that constructive criticism sandwich of something nice, something mean, but constructive and something nice again. Right. If we could just do that, like we want to build a community. That's the whole point of comedy is we're, we're the, we are already the outcasts, right? We're the, we're the gestures of the world. Like people already kind of look down on us a little bit. Like you, you think you can make money telling jokes? Remember that teacher that told you that you think you're funny, you're a wise guy, you'd be able to make money with jokes. Sure. Yes. Yes, I do. And yeah, now maybe. you are. Yeah. yeah. Someday. <laughs> yeah. So don't, yeah. don't be, don't beat down on, on people who are trying to live your same dream. Let's all lift each other up because here's the thing, right? It's what the high tide lifts all boats. That's the truth. Love that. Right. Yep. If we all help each other, we're going to get better. And then we can do, collective not that i'm saying we should do like unionize or whatever but we i mean we can collectively raise up everything together by working together i, I know there are is a comedian that i spoke to that does want to unionize comedians i think it's a great idea there's there's not a protections for us and a lot of what the work that we do is for free unfortunately more yeah time, gas money if you're lucky <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah you're, if you're lucky and you know if you're not you're doing the the, the eight hours that you spent refining that bit that you do for five minutes on stage, you get no money for, and you had to pay for gas and probably a drink and a maybe parking and yeah. or a subway or whatever it was. And All you got are those five minutes of exposure. The five oh, minutes okay. of, ex cool. of, of exposure. Yeah. I hate that. Word. Exactly. Yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah. You get stage time. Yeah. Yeah. It's at your club it's that you're making life. money off of me for, you know, yes. guy. exactly. It's, it's not a glamorous lifestyle. And to piggyback on what you're saying, you know, about words mattering, it's like, Look, man, if you did something that sucks, like just own up to it and, and listen to the people that you're hurting and understand why you're hurting them. And, you know, like just meet somewhere in the middle and hey, we're all going to be fine, you know, like, but it's the people that are like, nah, man, I'm dying on this hill that like, okay, well now you just look like an idiot. Now this person still feels crappy. It's like, it's a lose, lose. Just, yeah. you know, just, just hear, just hear out the people, you know, that you may or may not be hurting with your words, you know, yep. just. Use your person, words man. to make people laugh. That's all we're that's all we're saying. That's it. Uh, yeah, we're comedians, man. Let's make people laugh. We're clowns. We're the world's clowns. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So bad. <laughs> Thank you. Danny, where can people find you at? Uh, yeah, search my name. I mean, it, my name is Danny Halloweeny. You know, you, you can't you can't miss me. So all the things, Instagram, Facebook. Although most of that stuff is just my kids. So you know, they're they're little cutie pies, but. Uh, you know, unofficial Disney Tonight Show podcast, obviously, clean comedy podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? 
Um, check us out on YouTube, you know, subscribe, like, um, you know, uh, obviously what we're, what we're doing here, Spotify, um, Okaizu, you know, uh, life, life, uh, life drop, no plug, life plug, um, <laughs> okizu.org. Um, you know, feel free to donate there. Um, yeah, those are my things. Perfect. You can go to jamesdcrevison.com. You can find us on YouTube under my same name, James D. Crevison. Don't forget to check out comedypreneur.com. I am working on, on new posts for it. I apologize. I know I'm behind. I've been working on a ton of projects. Some things that are hopefully going to come out in the next year or two. I apologize, guys. I really do. I, it's, it's only me writing that thing. Now, that being said, I have thought about asking other comedians to submit blog posts, and I will give you credit for it. I have no problem putting your name on there. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to email me, jamesdcreviston at gmail.com, email me a, you know, a couple of ideas for blog posts. I can't pay you a ton of money. I apologize for that. I don't make a lot of money on that site. I make enough to pay for hosting every year. Right now it's growing. I'm sure if I did more, it would probably grow and I could pay more. And at some point that's going to be my goal is to employ more comedians and pay them a livable wage and all those things that I, that I just said about raising the boats. So if you would like that, great. I understand if you're saying, James, exposure and $5 is not enough for me. <laughs> I get it, 100%. I'm not, not mad I at pay you. Pay my internet gas money, James. Yeah, I, I apologize. Um, but I would love to. So if you want to, great. If you don't, cool. No worries. No harm, no foul. And then, you know, if I can, then I will play residuals and do whatever I can to help, to help other people because I'm all about helping. So thank you so much for listening. Danny, thank you so much for being my, my co-host. And everybody have a good week. <laughs> Have a happy Halloweeny <laughs> and have a good one. Bye.